I'll be honest, when I first met this World War II pilot you're about to meet, I was kind of embarrassed. Why? Well, he had one of the most treacherous jobs in the entire war, and I had never heard of it. Before the pandemic, before masks and all of that, I learned so much from this veteran. But please be warned, this story contains some disturbing elements. We continue tonight to mark the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Well, it's okay. Don't do as well. Uh oh, this time it came out <laughs> tails. Uh oh. Oh, you gotta hear about the coin flip and the girl. Now, who is that? That's me. But first, let's go back. Major Herbert L. Soybert. To the legendary Flying Tigers in their P-40s. Flying Tigers, the famous American volunteer group, wing their way across China for the last time as volunteers. They're known as the AVG, American Volunteer Group. Dr. Rob Satino, senior historian, the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. They're better known as the Flying Tigers. It's one of the most famous insignia in the entire war. Their goal, to save China from Japan. The Japanese invaded China in 1937, four full years before Pearl Harbor. And in case you don't know this part of history, brace yourself. The Japanese described their own strategy in China as kill all, loot all, burn all. This baby terrified, alone after Japanese bombs, but it gets much worse. The massacre, the rape of Nanjing, the number slaughtered in just several weeks. They probably killed two or three hundred thousand civilians in kind of an orgy of violence. American newspapers carried the stories, Japanese officers with a samurai swords. And actually, you know, having beheading contests, and some of the footage is quite sickening. Uh, anyone will tell you it's not as easy as it sounds. Sometimes you have to hack away for a long period of time to sever a, a, a head from a human body. The Japanese terrorized the Chinese. Man or woman didn't matter. Pregnant Chinese women being disemboweled, quite literally the baby being cut out of her womb. It is sickening. But it's history, and it helps us understand why pilots like Herb Soybert are such heroes. I ended up as a lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant Colonel Soybert flew the hump to get critical supplies to the Flying Tigers to save the Chinese people from surrender to Japan, critical to us in World War II. But the mission for this lieutenant colonel. How dangerous was the hump? Let me count the ways. The route from India to China over the Himalayas. I was flying along and all of a sudden I hit this rough air and before I knew it I had lost 2,000 feet. It was that rough so the first flight it was kind of scary. Nowhere to land, everywhere to crash. We would fly at about 17,000 feet and then the mountains got up to a little over 15,000 and uh, they overloaded our aircraft so that we could barely get up to 17,000 feet. Lieutenant Colonel Soybert flew C 47s. His mission always treacherous. Uh, that is for 50 flights over the hump. But sadly enough, history has never really given hero status to Soybert and his fellow pilots. There's no, you know, surprising your opponent crawling up to him in the middle of the night with a knife in your teeth. It's a supply flight. And no one's ever going to make a movie called Supplying Private Ryan. But Soybert knows he did his part. I've always wondered, what did it feel like that the whole world, pretty much, was at war? It was a lot worse than a lot of people realized. It was a scary time, but what a time to be born. August 17, 17. 1917. Uh, and so some quick math. You are how young? Uh, I'm 102. 102. You got to be proud of that. Well, I feel lucky. Lucky, he says, to serve our country. And lucky. I was just standing on the street corner. To spot a pretty girl. Now you get to hear the coin flip story. I asked her for a date, and she said, no, I don't even know you. But a dapper young military pilot never gives up. 
And I finally, in desperation, said, well, how about me flipping a coin if it turns up heads? So she kind of went along with it. It turned up heads. I lucked out. I, I won the lottery. Oh, that is a great story. And from this greatest generation, what incredible service. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Herbert Soyert. I am so grateful to hear his story, and I just wish he were still with us. Not long after our interview, Lieutenant Colonel Soybert passed away. I went to his memorial in Jacksonville. So much respect for this World War II pilot. We are losing these precious veterans too fast. So next week, all new stories at 6 in Voices of Valor.